previous video, I had mentioned that Janet got a new loom. This is a much smaller loom, but of a similar style to the bigger loom she has. And the idea she had when she bought this loom is that it would be narrow enough to fit through a 36 inch door so we could load it up in a truck, take it to a workshop class, something like that. Unfortunately, when we specified 36 inch door, I don't think we were quite clear enough because 36 inch doors don't actually have a full 36 inch opening in them. And this is 36 inches wide. It would fit through a 36 inch hole, but not through a standard 36 inch doorway. So that meant we had to take it apart to bring it in the house. And unfortunately, some of the joints were put together with just lag bolts in end grain. And unfortunately, lag bolts don't hold very well in end grain. So we started having some trouble with bolts stripping out. We actually broke a few bolts in other places. And since this was kind of a custom order and was sort of a prototype for some of what Janet asked for in this loom, we don't really blame the guy that built the loom, but there were things we needed to fix. So after thinking about it for a little while, we figured out one of the best things to do is just to put some sort of nut inside these horizontal pieces so the bolts weren't going into end grain anymore but were capped. And we were able to find some dowel nuts and those drill in across the grain and provide a way to, to put a regular threaded bolt in. So these now have regular threaded bolts and these dowel nuts. And that made this really very solid. I replaced some of the other bolts on this with regular through bolts and nuts on the back side. And of course we went to 3 8 bolts instead of the quarter inch bolts that were in here. So I had to enlarge all the counter sinks so that the bolt heads and the washers could be flush with the surface or below the surface of the wood so they didn't stick out. And that's really done a good job making the loom more solid. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. We can certainly take it apart if we really wanted to travel with it but I think that's probably off the table with this loom to have to spend an hour or two hours everywhere you go putting the loom back together really isn't a very good option. And if you do that, you can't have the loom warped, so you still have to warp it when you get there. And most classes want you to bring your loom warped and ready to go. Most people that go to these things use little table looms, little portable things, and they're not bad for learning certain techniques and designs and things like that. But being able to work on a real loom, even though it's a smaller size, is really a pleasure if you go to one of these classes. Now, of course, I say we, I've been to a few weaving classes and I understand the basics, but I am not a weaver. I'm just somebody that's dabbled with it. Janet is the real weaver. Maybe if I ask nice, Janet will explain some of the features of this loom and why this is the style of loom she prefers. This is a Rio Grande walking loom that I recently purchased. It's a style of loom that it's based in a European floral loom fashion, but it's typical of Hispanic colonial Southwest in that it has treadles that are operated by standing on them rather than treadles that are operated from the sitting position on the bench. And this gives quite a bit of power to the treadles to open and close what we call the shed, the space between these warps. Um, it is built in Chama, New Mexico. It has a, a fairly unique feature for a Rio Grande loom, or at least a modern one, in that it has a beater that hangs from above up here and pivots here, rather than down close to the floor and coming up and working this way. Um, I requested this because I tried one in a in a shop and really like the power that this provides. The maker is um, Dave Baber of Chamba, New Mexico. The loom is available through Shepherd's Lamb, a weaving shop or a, a yarn uh, supplier 
in Chama. Uh, you can find them online at tierrawolves.com or as organiclamb.com. It's got a fairly narrow weaving width. It'll only weave 24 inches wide, <laughs> with or without the help of a cat. <laughs> Looms used by the Spanish colonial people in New Mexico. And I imagine they brought this whole style from Spain. Mm -hmm.